Hello viewers, four DIYers here back on the tutorial video for everyone. Now in this particular video here I'll be doing a demonstration on how to repair the brake assembly on a lawn tractor. Now this particular tractor I am working on here is a Craftsman 18 horsepower, a uh, twin cylinder with a 44 inch cut. Now the systems here may vary between makes and models but it should be a fairly similar principle. What we have here basically just an output shaft from the transaxle here which does have a uh, basically a brake rotor on it. And then we have just a mechanical caliper here which does have a pad on each side. And you can see here we do have a lever that goes back and forth when you press the clutch and brake pedal. This does move the mechanism back and push the pad against the rotor which in turn stops the tractor. Now considering this is a fairly exposed unit, a lot of grass and stuff can get up in there. What can happen over time is these can seize up and therefore not work or even the possibility of the pads will disintegrate or maybe just out of adjustment you just have to readjust it. Now this one on this particular tractor here I have already repaired but I just want to go through a walkthrough on how to do that so you can repair the one on yours. Now basically with the orientation here of where I am um, within reference to the tractor I'm at the rear of the tractor. I do have it up on ramp so it's easily accessible. Now you can go ahead and remove the right side tire when looking at the rear uh, but at times what can happen is that the rim will be actually seized to the axle and if you get too forceful with it, what can happen is it can actually pull a shaft out of the transaxle and it breaks the clip in the inside there. Therefore, you have to pull this whole assembly apart, either repair it or get a new one. So this is why I recommend just putting the rear up on ramps and doing it this method here. Now as for removing the caliper here, basically what we have here is we'll have two bolts, one on the front side, one on the opposite side here, and we have a small uh, cotter pin there which you just want to remove and then just swing that uh, lever back. Now if you see here that the one bolt is different than as opposed to the one on the front, what's happened here when I was doing this, the one bolt was seized in the rear. Now I did try to get loose but unfortunately it did break because it is mild steel. Now luckily what happened here was there was enough of the stud left out where I could get onto it with a pair of vice grips. So what I did then is I just heated it up with a small propane torch. Now you want to be very careful if you're going with that method because what can happen here is because there is a seal on the output shaft here where it's the rotor is connected to and there is also grease inside and you can cook the grease. So you don't want to heat it up too hot where it's going to destroy that. So you just want to heat it up enough where it's able to expand the metal and break it free. And also what you want to do is you want to add some penetrating oil to that as well. So the penetrating oil does work inside the stud there when it is being heated up and just basically rotate it back and forth, loose and tight and loose and tight and finally the uh, remainder of the broken bolt will come as off. As you can see here I've already got the front bolt loosened, I've got the rear bolt loosened here. And I've already taken the pin out of the top here, so basically what I can do with the arm here, just simply swing it back and take the push rod out there. Now as for these two, I just continue to take them out and then simply the assembly would just pop right off. Now I want to be careful inside here because there is a little pad in there with a the backer plate. You want to make sure that it doesn't fall out and you don't want to lose that because you do need that in order for this assembly to work if you are reu reusing the existing parts. Now just to show you what the assembly does look like off the tractor here, again with the orientation here, basically this is, would be against the rotor. This is towards the rear of the tractor and this is towards the front of the tractor. Now as for this bolt on the back side here, and just to show you what the old one was when I removed it, see that much was pretty much sticking out of the casting there. Uh, so there was enough to grab onto it with a pair of vice grips, lock it on and then slowly work at it with heat and some penetrating order in order to remove it. Now if yours does break off flush, it'll be a little bit more of a task in order to fix that. Now you can go ahead and either drill it, use a very small easy out on it, or you can go ahead and drill it and then uh, drill it up to the appropriate size. Sometimes you'll be lucky enough that you just have to clean it out with a uh, tap, clean out any of the old material from the old bolt, or other times what will happen is you'll have to drill it up to the next size and tap it out to the next size. Now, if you are removing the factory bolts, if you do have it equipped with that, it's just a 3 8 head on it, so you can either use a wrench or a socket and a ratchet. There's plenty of room for either or. Now basically how this assembly works here, you can see we do have a brake pad here. Now what does happen is when this is pushed back, this lever here, it'll push this pad outwards. Now there is two pins on the inside here, it's a fairly simple setup, there's nothing uh, too complicated about it, but there's a couple different uh, issues that can happen with this in order why it doesn't work. Sometimes what can happen is these p pads will just either completely disintegrate or um, maybe they just wear out over time. Other times what will happen they get seized up inside, either the pads or the pins on the inside here. Now as we're going around to the opposite side here, you can see this is towards the front of the tractor, this is towards the rear of the tractor, just to show you the orientation. Now sometimes I've seen, depending on the maker model, you will have a 
spring which does return this arm back into place. Now in this particular model it doesn't. This is something you'll have to refer to uh, if, on your manual if you do have one for your particular model of tractor. Now basically again what we have here is we'll have two adjustments on this. We'll have the adjustment which comes in this way from the push rod so you can show us when this activates and we also have the second adjustment which is by this nut here. Now basically what this nut does is this moves the lever back and forth so it does tighten it up against the pins or it will loosen up against the pins. Now if you have it too loose it won't actually touch the pins. If you have it too tight obviously the brake will be on all the time. Once I split this down a little further I'll show you exactly how it works. Now you will notice this bracket does have somewhat of an odd shape to it but that is because you can see it has somewhat a concave shape to it the way it sits right now so the pins actually do sit inside and they are not touching the bracket and they don't have any tension on the pad. Now once you move that what will happen here is because this bracket does stay in the exact same position you can see it does slope downwards therefore that pushes more pressure against those pins and then therefore activates the pad against the rotor. As you can see with the assembly all split down here basically what we have here is we have the caliper assembly we do have the backer plate with the uh, brake pad and we do have the lever here uh, with the washer that goes against the lever and then we have this little metal retaining bracket here and we do have a locking nut as well. Now moving on first with the caliper itself here we can have these pins over time what will happen is they do seize up so you do have to make sure that they don't seize up and basically with this one here what you can do is basically I didn't need any heat to apply to it in order to take these out all I did was they still did move a very small amount but they were obviously stuck in there so I used just a punch and a hammer popped them both out cleaned them up with a bit of emery paper and then reinstalled them now when reinstalling them you do want to apply some never seize in there in order to prevent these pins from seizing up again over time now you can go ahead and use some penetrating oil as well. I don't normally recommend that because that can wash out over time. Now as to the pad here, you can see it's fairly thick and we do have the backer plate as well. The backer plate just uh, allows for the pins to apply even pressure there because the brake pad material is somewhat delicate and we don't want it breaking away if it does bind up in there if one of the pins do work and the other one stops working. Now as to the bracket here, you can see it is a odd shape but that is intended so the pins do sit in here so they do sit at their maximum out point and basically when this bracket is rotated you can see it then applies pressure on opposite ends here which in turn pushes the pad against the rotor itself. Now so this washer here basically that's intended just so everything moves freely the assembly. We do have this metal retaining tab and we do have this nut here. Now this is a lock nut. I do recommend having some type of locking nut on there in order to hold everything in proper adjustment because what can happen over time considering a lawn tractor does vibrate quite a bit and also does go with rough train. This can loosen up and therefore it will be out of adjustment again and your brakes won't work. Basically you want to make sure here is that there's no dirt, oil or grease on the rotor itself. The same goes for the brake pads as well. You can use a bit of brake cleaner on there just to clean that away. Now there is a brake pad on the opposite side here. Now in order to get that you do have to remove this nut on the outside here but it can, looks like it does have quite a bit of material there and I don't find it necessary in order to take this apart any further than it already is. Then once you remove that nut, the rotor does come out of place and you can then go ahead, basically it's the same principle as the brake pad, it just sits into place there and you can replace that. Now as for using the uh, propane torch on here when the uh, bolt was seized up in there, now you do want to be careful because what can happen is it can cook the grease in the inside and there is a seal up here. And also we are working with aluminum here, aluminum does have a low melting point you want to make sure that you don't melt the aluminum either now the propane torch i find i did put it on a very low setting it doesn't get exactly hot enough to melt this but you do want to be very careful now as for the push rod here you can see we do have a spring on the end of it which does go against the uh, lever that does activate the brake assembly itself we do have a couple nuts on the opposite side and a small threaded portion on this rod here now basically this is the other adjustment that we can do this what this does is activate it when we are pushing the clutch and brake pedal down so therefore this will activate it at a certain time. Now with this one here, there is a small space between the lever itself and the spring. Roughly about uh, an inch and a quarter I would say. This is the way I adjusted mine. Now the clutch obviously does activate first in order to release the tension on the belts itself. Then once I have it about the pedal pushed down about halfway, this is when the spring starts to touch that lever. When I push down all the way, then the brake is on full and it does fully stop the tractor. So once everything is back together there and looking down from the top side here, uh, I'm just looking through the shifter hole. You can see a perfect view. Now this obviously depends where your shifter is located on your tractor. 
but you can see where the metal push rod is along with the spring and the lever there you can see there is roughly about an inch and a quarter in between that metal spring and the bracket itself that is how this one i have adjusted accordingly and you can see when i start to push down the clutch and uh, brake lever now just about halfway there and you can see it starts to just slowly engage it and then we go down the full way and it is fully engaged now now as for the leather lever itself you want to make sure that it sits about an eighth of an inch away from those pins there so you uh, are ensure that it is uh, not engaged when you are using the lawn tractor and it does return back into place obviously then you do have plenty of movement on the push rod itself and also the brake pedal in order to make up for that adjustment. This concludes the rest of my tutorial video. If you have any comments or questions please don't hesitate to post them below. Also please subscribe to my channel and like my video. Thank you for watching.